What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. this is my second channel, and this is your home for my Twitch highlights and my podcast. So if you like this, and you wanna see more of that, and you wanna join the live streams, there's a link to that in the description of this video. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. A lot of people have asked me questions about this, about like hardcore being violent and stuff, and uh, my opinions on that. There has been a lot of talk recently about hardcore being too violent, moshing, crowd killing. Do more people are discovering it through TikTok during the pandemic and bands like Gulch and Tsunami blowing up? Do you think in 2021 we need to revisit the conversation about hardcore and violence, or do you think that it's a thing that belongs in the scene? To say that hardcore shouldn't be violent is kind of like saying that a dog shouldn't lick its balls. It's just kind of what it is. I'm not saying it's great. I'm not saying it's bad necessarily. It's just sort of the nature of the beast. There's a, an aspect of hardcore violence that is obviously not cool. Crowd killing little kids who obviously don't understand what's going on and are just going to be completely like broadsided by getting spin kicked in the back of the head. That's not cool. Jumping people that don't understand what's happening or that, you know, basically victimizing people that don't get it. That's not cool. And that shouldn't happen. Uh, that does happen. But but I think I think for the most part, people who go to a hardcore show know what they're signing up for, I think. For the most part, if you go see a band like Gulch or Tsunami or, you know, Madball or something like that. You still people in this world. You're either from the Bay or North Bay. And, you know, you're up front and you get punched in the face by somebody, you know, who's dancing maybe harder than you think they should. I don't feel sorry for you for that because we all knew that could happen. You know, it's the same as like any other, basically a, vi a violent sport. You know, if you go, if you do jujitsu and you get your knee popped, I, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, we all knew that that could happen. So if you didn't want to get your knee popped, then maybe, maybe jujitsu is not the hobby for you. If you didn't want to get knocked and in, knocked into the mud, then maybe playing football wasn't the sport for you. You know, I guess that's how, kind of how I feel about it. That said, I think the kind of people who are into being violent, I don't think that's a great lifestyle. I've known a lot of people like that who just kind of basically live to go to hardcore shows and get in fights and beef and stuff like that. And they're always into like drama and crew shit and blah, blah, blah. That's no way to live. People are into violence because something bad happened to them for the most part. Like most of the most of the people who are into that stuff grew up in physically abusive homes and that doesn't make it okay. But that's just kind of the reality of it. Nobody wakes up in the morning and is like, oh, I wanna go get in a fight if, if everything is cool with them. The kind of people who are into violence are typically trauma survivors and they wanna take out their shit on other people. And that doesn't make it okay. But that is just a fact. It's just the nature of the hardcore scene is like, I mean, it's called hardcore for a reason. It's not chill music. You don't get into bands called Throwdown and Hate Breed and Death Threat expecting that, or at least you shouldn't. Step up, you coward, fucking criminal. Step up, step up to me. And for the most part, I would say, and I've known a lot of violent people in hardcore, for the most part, they're not going to fuck with you unless you are a willing participant. That's not always true, but... A lot of these stories people tell like, oh, I was just standing there minding my own business and then somebody punched me in the face for, just for smoking a cigarette. I, I don't think that happens. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? I, I, I've seen that sort of thing happen before. And what really happened was somebody was smoking a cigarette uh, outside at a straight edge show uh, and someone told them to put it out and they said, fuck you. And then they got their ass beat. I'm not saying that's okay, but I am saying if you go to a hardcore show, if you go to a straight edge show and you're smoking and you get an attitude with people in a scene known for having a short fuse that will get violent with you and then you get your ass beat, maybe that's a lesson for you to learn about not poking a hornet's nest. Here's the thing. I did a podcast with Andre Feely, which I think is a very good one. Andre Feely is a UFC fighter. He And he's a hardcore guy. He's been in a lot of fucking fights, fights in the ring, fights outside the ring. And what we talked about that I think is a valuable aspect of this is there's a lot of people out there in the world who will kick your ass. 
And I think we've gotten to a place in society where people may think that their words don't have consequences, and they do. On Twitter, you can talk all the shit you want to somebody. They're never going to punch you in the face. But in the real world, that might happen. And it's important to remember that. Right or wrong, you need to understand how to conduct yourself around people like this because they're out there in the world. From uh, Zan Tetsuken, uh, could it be like making the trauma survivors experience a trauma again, like with PTSD, reliving it, that may tr tr trigger the violence? Yes, this is what happens with trauma survivors. They seek to reenact the trauma. So, for example, most people who are, you know, who, who commit sexual assault were sexually assaulted themselves. People who are violent assholes probably, you know, had a violent asshole dad that beat them. This is the way it works. People who experience trauma oftentimes, you know, seek to reenact that trauma. I, I don't know that I have a great answer to this necessarily, other than it's irrelevant to ask whether hardcore should or shouldn't be violent. It just is. And it's totally, totally valid if that turns you off. If you're like, well, fuck that shit. I don't want anything to do with hardcore then. If I'm going to be around a bunch of crazy, unstable, violent people that might punch me in the face at any time, that's totally valid if you're not interested in that but some people are and and that's that's why they like hardcore and like like it's saying in the chat you know there's always someone there to help you get up from the ground the hardcore scene can be violent but it also has the most down-to-earth supportive and kind people i've ever met i think that's true too i think it's just playing by different rules and i think there's a lot of people that would would benefit from learning how to play by that rule set you know basically you got to treat people with respect or you're going to get your ass kicked I learned that one the hard way. When I moved to Cleveland, I remember I got my fucking ego checked a couple times. I don't, I don't remember exactly what happened, but there was some show I went to and this dude was just like, well, are you going to fucking fight me? And I was like, uh, no, I guess, I guess not. <laughs> Cause I realized I was in over my head. And so I just like walked away and left. That was a good experience for me in hindsight. I got checked. I was being a little shit running my mouth and I needed to get checked. I'm glad I did. That's my thoughts on it. I should I should add, what's not cool for sure is is the people who who see it on TikTok or in some YouTube video or something like that and like basically cosplay as crew kids. That's dumb. Those and a lot of those kids are going to get their ass beat by some of the tougher folks out there. So I, I'm not I'm not into that either. Those are my thoughts.